Hi, families of the internet. Girls night, a how-to. What's that term? I just, I don't know what it means. Running into trouble, as it were. Just be on the lookout for the new videos coming soon. So, cheers. Hi. Hi. Well, uh, is it? Okay. Hi. Welcome to Pearls and Palm Trees with your host, Chelsea Hess, and her beloved husband, Isaiah Hess. Hola. Como esta usted? E tu bienvenidos. All right. So. No comprendo espanol. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So today we are doing a vlog, and I thought it would be good to have a masculine presence to share wisdom with all of us. Wisdom. I'm glad I'm so wise. He's so wise. I'm perfy. I'm, I'm helping her achieve her dreams. Achieve my dreams! Okay. So, anyway, we are going to talk about a couple viral posts. I have done this video like five or six times. I'm not gonna lie. And then I was like, I need, I need somebody to talk with about this so it's not just me being silly. It's somebody else being silly with me. Um, so we are going to talk about, um, Lori Alexander in her post um, that men like debt-free virgins without tattoos. And the problem was when I kept trying to film this vlog that she kept coming out with more responses. <laughs> so I was, and they, they just got more and more ridiculous every- So in essence, like the Facebook poster who doesn't know when to stop. Yes, it, it kind of became like a viral thread of comments. That's mm -hmm. basically what was YouTube Sounds comments right. just going down so any who's also the first one that we're going to talk about is the primary article men prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos sans the tattoos mm. so isaiah Hess, my dearest darling beloved husband yes. do men actually prefer this give me your thoughts thoughts on this first article well uh, undoubtedly some men do yeah does she does she describe an ideal that some men will want yes mm -hmm. will some men want Girls who have half tattoos, of course. Sure. Yeah. Well, some want girls who have not been virgins, and uh, I'm sure. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. But, but the, the, the what I think men, men are really going to want is what is the character of that woman? Right. It's not so much the tattoos or the debt or the virginity that matter. No. It is it is the character behind that woman. So what right. if, for me, if I've been dating someone and and someone told me that, if, let's say if you, had told me you had not been a virgin. Mm -hmm. Would well, that be a deal breaker yeah. for me? No. No, it wouldn't have. No. The b bigger question would have been, okay, so you, you weren't then, what are you now? Mm -hmm. And what exactly. evidence is there to support that? Well, I mean. That's the bigger question. When you and I uh, were dating, mm -hmm. we went through like a series of questions talking about, you know, who we were and exactly. what our core values were. Exactly. And that was the more important part. Absolutely. And I was looking at you the same way too, because, you know, I mean, I, I happen to be a debt-free virgin without tattoos. And exactly. I, that wasn't what was important to me. Correct. What was important to me was, does he love Jesus? Is he going to jail for something? <laughs> like those were, you know, was his criminal history? Am mm -hmm. I going to end up dead in the back of a van? That so would be good. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> that wouldn't. That would be terrible, right? That would be bad. That would be bad. So I mean, and um, Lori Alexander, her writing in this article was just so bad. Oh, it, it was, was terrible. It was terrible. I, I had to read this thing like half a dozen times just to try to figure figure what she was saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, I, I think it's, her poor writing abilities mm -hmm. obfuscated some of what she was trying to say. I think so too. I suspect she was trying to get at the character side of things. Mm -hmm. But it was so poorly written, it was conveyed as though, okay, you just check this, these three boxes. Are you a virgin? Mm -hmm. Check. Are you a, are, are you debt free? Check. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you tattoo free? Check. And that's all that was really required, but right. that's not really the point. Well, I you try mean, to look for indicators yeah. in someone's life, and maybe those things happen to be indicators, mm -hmm. but by themselves, they're not, they're not necessarily a good standard. You have to find out the heart behind it. Other things that she wrote that I just, I, like, I had a hard time, like, processing mm -hmm. myself. Well, I had a whole time, I had a hard time processing this article because you heard it 
so much oh, yes. about how, oh, yes. how hard of a time I had processing mm -hmm. the article. And she talks about um, if a woman goes to college, mm -hmm. that she needs to be re-educated by her husband. And so my, from her viewpoint, my spirituality and everything just is right on your shoulders, buddy. Well, I mean, you the, need the to... husband is supposed to be the head of the family, right? And so right. there's some level of spiritual leadership. Right. But that does not mean the wife abdicates her responsibilities to understand and learn scripture. Well, exactly. It doesn't. I it, mean, it doesn't. We're, we're, both, we're both supposed to become sanctified, and the wife doesn't do it through her husband. We each do that. We're each individually accountable for, for Christ. Well, one of the things that I have said multiple times to you because of this article <laughs> is that, you know, when I'm standing before God on Judgment Day, mm -hmm. you know, if I die or rapture or whatever, right. so I'm standing before God, I'm not going to have you and pull you in front of me saying, this guy's saved? Exactly. This guy knows what it is? That's not no. How this works. No, it's not. not like, do we have bearing on each other's sanctification? Absolutely. Right. But, I mean, I went to Bible college. Mm -hmm. I, you know, did the theological training. I was a Sunday school teacher for six years. Exactly. I, you know, and. Well, I mean, there it doesn't, little... doesn't Paul tell Timothy, and I think it's first Timothy, that the younger women are supposed to instruct the older women are supposed to instruct the younger. Mm -hmm. Which well, he mentions in here too. Right. But what, what that says is that now the younger women are supposed to get instruction from somewhere other than their husbands. Well, it's really, she, yeah. So she's not even being consistent here. You can't she's quote not. that mm -mm. and then say, well, um, women have to be, re, they, get, they learn re stuff from their husbands. Yeah, they have to be re-educated. Yeah, husbands are the spiritual leader. They should guide what happens spiritually in their home, but there are other sources in play. It's mm -hmm. not just just the man. Well, the exactly. Other important players. It could be mm -hmm. parents, it could be friends, it could be older women in the church, it could be mm -hmm. the pastor in mm -hmm. the church. There are a lot of different options. Well, exactly. And then there are so many women in the Bible that are discluded from, oh, absolutely. from this because like, um, Ah, gosh, Priscilla and Aquila. Like, she was the more spiritually trained than he was. You have Timothy's grandmother and mother. Mm -hmm. You have, um, I mean, you even have, like, solo women missionaries that are excluded, like Lottie Moon is right. completely excluded. Like, it, she's, exactly. she's not something that a Christian man would want. Well, right. um, obviously, because she was a single woman missionary, she ain't got time for that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so it was just, and it was really meddled, and I think she did have... A godly, like, I, I think she did have some godly things rattling around in her head, but it's obvious that she didn't go to college because she can't write them out properly. So, <laughs> well, and, and the thing is about her concern about women having to be having to relearn things after going to college. Well, what about the men relearning mm -hmm. things? Are, yep. are they somehow immune to the pressures of college? For some mm -hmm. reason, I doubt that. As uh, someone who's been in college for four years and is starting again now, I don't uh -huh. think it's better or worse for either one. It's just bad, period. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you go, go to secular or Christian, there are going to mm -hmm. be certain pressures that you just face. And so well, if the true. women have to be re-educated on leaving college, too. wouldn't the guys need those? They well? would have to. They but would then that comes to. back to the original question. It's not a, did you check a certain box? Is it a, what is your character? What is at that core? What, mm -hmm. what is it that you truly believe about scripture? Those are the things that matter. Not, not whether you check the certain box of, oh, she's gone to college or if she's done college. Therefore, mm -hmm. I'd have to retrain her. No, that's just not how it works. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's move on to the next one. So she did a response to people hating on her article. So mm -hmm. here is her first response to her haters. Mm -hmm. Like the next three articles were basically her responses mm -hmm. to her haters. Like, see you later, haters. Mm -hmm. And basically all she does in the next, like, two is she just quotes people. And same with the third one. It's like she doesn't really have any original thoughts. No, she, she doesn't really. If her original intent was to talk about character mm -hmm. and whatnot, which it might have been, she did nothing to illuminate that. No, she didn't. In her later article. She basically mm -hmm. doubled down on her, uh, on her title of her article. Men who men prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. She just doubled down on proving that. Well, it, so if, if her article had been really this seriously misunderstood, if, if it had been me, yeah, I would have written say, "Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa everybody, hang this on." This is what I actually meant. Let me let me try yeah. to explain you what I mean because it's clear I did not communicate it properly the first time. Let me try mm -hmm. it this way. She didn't do that. It no, was just, she actually. Hey, look at all these people who agree with me. Uh huh. Exactly, and. 
it's still very poorly written, which signals to me she didn't go to college. I mean, she's awfully uppity for a woman who believes all this, but she didn't She didn't go to college. Um, I mean, seriously, if she believes her own thing, shouldn't her husband re be writing this, not her? <gasps> he should be the one with the blog. Mr. Alexander, we're calling you. You be the one with the blog. You hold her to her biblical standard. Thanks. Boom. I don't know. <laughs> I think I don't know. Um, and then she posts a couple um, scriptures here. But what she kind of does in the second one is that she kind of goes back and forth on whether they're sins or their preferences. Here, because the issue, the biggest issue with, with, who, with who you marry is the character of the person. Right. And it, it's like, that's what needs to be emphasized here. Mm -hmm. Is it nice to have, for a guy or a girl, to have their potential spouse be debt-free? Of course. Is it nice for them not to have tattoos? Of course. Is it nice for them not to um, have been sleeping around before they married? Of course. But it, it, we need, need to be careful in terms of there can be past lives that, while they may have consequences, mm -hmm. people can be redeemed from that and go on to lead very healthy lives. Apostle Paul, for example. Well, like, my question is, how realistic is this in today's church environment? Like, well, for real. Uh, yeah, I, I no, think not it's, terribly. It's no. not terribly realistic. But, I mean, that, that doesn't necessarily let everyone off the hook. The fact that no. it's unrealistic or not. Well, but I what mean, it, what it, what we're living in a post-church culture. Yes. So people that are getting saved now would be impeded by this kind of talk. Because it's like, oh, I'm Absolutely. already thrown away. I'm not, I'm not... You know, awesome. no, no good man's gonna want me now, kind exactly. of thing. It's so it's it. I think it's impeding the gospel. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It, it's too much of a. It's moralistic. Very it, moralistic it, it, in, in its approach. She did As have a. a uh, she did have a little paragraph in her second article stating, "Oh well, God loves you." BT Dubs, smiley face, right. thumbs up. It, it, and it's like, well, that's a little too late. Your first article is the one that's zooming around the world. This one is like, who cares anymore? You've already turned off so many women and so many, maybe men probably, to the gospel thinking, well, I'm not good enough to be saved. Another thing that bothers me too is when she talks about uh, women that have debt, mm -hmm. like you can have debt from multiple sources, but what she really points out is college because she would rather, you know, men would rather have stupid women. Would you rather marry no. a stupid girl? Of course not. I want to be a stupid girl. <laughs> this is where the question of how was the debt incurred, why was it incurred, mm -hmm. what happened? If it's if it's a question of profligate spending on shoes, that's one okay. Thing. That's that could be a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it someone who started some girl started her own, let's say, um, tailoring business, and therefore has yeah. a lot of money, but because it's a startup cost for your business, right? Different exactly. Different story. Exactly. But if it's for mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. Again, different story. Because you're incurring college debt to right. pay it off later on the, you know, hopes that you're going to get a job to pay it off later. Right. Nothing. Exactly. And so they're, they're not all, not all debt is created equal. No, it's not. Or what if, she, what if the girl has a good enough job where she can afford a, a home payment? Okay, mm -hmm. she's got a lot of debt there in the form of a mortgage. Mm -hmm. But is that really a problem? No, it's not. not really. she, she owns her own home. Exactly. She's building equity. That's, you know, if there are too many, I think there are far too many exceptions exactly. to this to make it even a plausible thing. Exactly. Well, it, it can't be cut and dry like this. Exactly. Absolutely not. The, not, no. The, the point not. of a title like that is to be clickbait. That's basically it, what it it's, was. It's not to actually mm -hmm. make a coherent point. No. It's to say, oh, what's this? I got to click on that article. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. all, that's all that that is. Yeah. It, it's, it's far too broad. Absolutely. To capture all possible circumstances. And the article mm -hmm. does nothing to explain that. One of the things about her article is that her title, she changed it. Mm -hmm. So it used to be just men prefer debt-free virgins without tattoos. And then later, when people called her out on it, she added the godly men. Aww. Godly. Godly men don't, don't want to marry girls that have been to college. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Um, well, anyway, so the next one that she posted was what men thought of her article, which is basically a lot of entitled men saying, yeah, I would like me a virgin without no tattoos. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she got a lot of creeper posts as well on that, a lot of creeper comments. It's, those guys who come in there, I cannot imagine this being particularly helpful. No, this, this was in no, no means helpful. Because too many, they're, they're liable to have stones thrown right back at them. Absolutely. Couldn't you? 
couldn't you write a thing that says what uh, um, women want debt-free versions without tattoos? Couldn't you write the exact same thing? Would those guys still be agreeing with it? I'm not sure they'd be as quite so enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. But th- this is this is where you have to have a consistent standard. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Mm-hmm. What really matters is the character. Absolutely. And there, there's, there are other questions, of course. Just because someone mm-hmm. has a great character doesn't mean you you are compatible with them as far as being married. But the character is that foundational question. And right. this completely misses it. This is mm-hmm. a, if you check three external boxes, you're good. Right. Whether that's that's not actually the case. No, it's not. Um, and one of the things that I found interesting is that she says in one of her many things that she wrote, mm-hmm. and she probably shouldn't have because they were poorly written at best. Um, <laughs> one of the things that she said was that her audience is young women mm-hmm. in the church that come from Christian homes that are looking to get married kind of thing. But that's not who it's, is really going to be reading no. that article. Like, I mean, well, young and, and, women and, these days are, and, and, don't care about blog articles. What they read right. is, you know, comments on Instagram. That's what they read, girls right. that well, age. Even then, even if that was her audience, it, I still don't think it's helpful because when you need to catch these girls is when they're early teens, maybe mm-hmm. even preteen. Exactly. In, in order for this to really have an impact. Mm-hmm. But at that point... It's too late. It, it's well, too late well, by then. Well, I mean, if you really... If, right. By the time they're reading this, it's too right. late. Right, yeah. If, to really have an impact, you need to ha- catch them earlier when they're 10, 12, 13, maybe 14, mm-hmm. something like that. Exactly. But who's going to be driving the child's uh, development at that point? The parents. Mm-hmm. And that's where this really should have been targeted at the parents. Okay, look, it parents, should be. If, if, you want, some things to, if you want a good son-in-law, make sure you do these things and make sure your daughter's... Right. listen to you but the even better suggestion would have been look parents mm-hmm. here here's the biblical standard for what a, a biblical standard for behavior what does a biblical wife look like right how can you help your daughter mm-hmm. achieve that maybe, exactly. maybe that would include um shielding her so that she she's not in environments where she could lose her virginity maybe it's mm-hmm. affirming her beauty so she doesn't need, feel the mm-hmm. need to get tattoos right maybe, um affirming her worth as a person so she exactly. doesn't feel pressured to you know to open up those legs and you know things like that Precisely. um you know or but maybe if you're, if you're concerned about college and debt okay encourage her look just because the world encourages you to go to college does not mean you have to mm-hmm. there are a lot of other vocations you can do which don't require it so maybe we can encourage you this way the approach was mm-hmm. totally wrong it was a moralistic check these boxes approach and it was targeted at the wrong audience it was and you need and to be targeted so- at the parents so they can help guide their daughters those, in those formative years right um, and I just, you know, it's one of those things too, like you've encouraged me to go back to college mm-hmm. and you know, I'm still considering and thinking about it and our dog still needs to go outside. Um, <laughs> so, but, be right there, dog. Okay. Uno momento, chica. Um, but <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where it's, um, it was just all wrong. The article was just all wrong. It was. And it wasn't It wasn't helpful to the gospel. And one of the things that I think as a Christian, my primary goal is how do I get people to the foot of the cross? Mm-hmm. That's my primary goal as a Christian. As a Christian blogger, how do I bring people to the cross? So I'm not going to be posting things that are needlessly antagonistic. And that's kind of what this was. It was, it was basically like, I'm not sure if she you know, with like saying th- derisive things just to make it a viral post. But it's almost like she got exactly what she wanted. She got a lot more people on her blog, yeah. got a lot more of her affiliate links clicked, and you know, things like yeah. that. Yeah. So it just wasn't. Absolutely. Okay, so last but not least, we have her final, her final article that she wrote, The Entitlement Attitude of Women. Ooh. <laughs> I feel so entitled. So I'm going to read a section because I thought, okay. (laughs) Okay, scene. (laughs) Okay, so she says, the reason my post had such a strong visceral reaction was because many women have an entitlement attitude that says they can live however they want and suffer no consequences. They can sleep around, get into huge amounts of debt by going to college, since everyone else is doing it, tattoo their bodies and still expect a good man to marry them. And they deserve it because God's grace covers their sins. 
The visceral reaction that I saw from Commodores had nothing to do with entitlement. Well, it's... She's conflating a bunch of things there. Yes. Of course, if you if you have a lot of debt, if you got mm -hmm. tattoos, if you slept around, will there be consequences? Of course. Mm -hmm. It could very well mean mm -hmm. that you don't get a certain man that you want because it's just, it wasn't... Because maybe he just couldn't handle it. Or, or vice mm -hmm. versa. It could, be, it could be the same yeah. with guys and girls um, going the other way. Right. But what, what she's confusing is it's you check these boxes, mm -hmm. therefore you're in, you're in good shape. You're you're guaranteed to get that good guy. When that when that's not the case. That's not the case. And just no. because you have messed up does not exclude you from it either. Mm -mm. It, it, it doesn't. It, it, well, sometimes Prince Charming never shows up. Exactly. Prince sometimes Charming. you go to the tower and uh, the princess has already been saved by some other guy exactly. that came along sooner. Exactly. So, like for me, it's kind of crazy because I, it almost feels like you're entitled to a spouse because. You have checked all these boxes. You are, you know, far and away the best applicant for the position of wifey poo, right. and <laughs> because you have you have all these credentials now behind exactly. you. So you're entitled to that person that you want. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, like a lot of the time, you know, I, I went to Christian college, and a lot of girls go there to get their MRS degree, mm -hmm. and like you know, guys are outnumbered on Christian campuses four to one by by ladies. So it's you know, you're not entitled to a spouse based off of this. And the opposite, you know, is also true that... Well, and where in all this does she deal with the question of pride? Because what if someone does check all these boxes? A girl mm -hmm. who is a virgin mm -hmm. or um, debt-free, mm -hmm. doesn't have tattoos, mm -hmm. and vice versa for the guy. Mm -hmm. where, is the, where is the dealing with the pride in there? It, it, this can encourage like, oh, I check all those boxes. Look mm -hmm. at me. I am special. Well, it's, no. it's coming with like an opposite reaction so basically what she's doing is she's condemning women that don't fit in the box and she's lifting up all these other women that do and i've met a lot of women that do fit in that box and i can tell you they are very arrogant already um including including you know girls that are these are women that are just like me and we hung out together in social circles and mm -hmm. i'm like i don't want to be around those ladies yep. because they have this you know well i deserve to get x and x and x from my fiance because i am so great right. And exactly. it's so funny because, like she states later on in her ar article, um, that, let's see, that it matters to your future husband what you did before you met him. Don't pretend that he should just take you with all, all that baggage because you are just, quote, so awesome. But it's kind of an opposite thing because it's not, um, you know, it's not women like this that are, you know, usually the girls that are like this, that do have tattoos, that have slept around, that are in the church, are a lot more humble than the girls that are on the flip side, that right. are debt-free, virgins without tattoos. Right, exactly. Because if mm -hmm. her original article had been someone like that, basically, if you do these things, don't you cannot expect to have no consequences out of it. Right. That's one thing. But right. that's not how their post was originally written. It is no, men it prefer X, Y, Z. Exactly. And, and so now we're coming at it completely differently mm -hmm. and, and and that's a serious problem, it's a major that, problem. that it's like okay mm -hmm. you can't if you do if you do these problematic things mm -hmm. you cannot expect Escape to get through that consequences. consequences but therefore if you don't do these things mm -hmm. you're golden it's just well, not how this works that this isn't how that works yeah well i mean because if you have an entitlement attitude that you checked all the boxes exactly. that's going to breed a horrible marriage i exactly. hate to be married to that chick exactly you know i don't you care if you have tattoos is... or exactly. debt or whatever if you're a terrible person i don't want to be around you exactly i would you take know? someone who's humble and kind and mm -hmm. and, and and who pursues god's heart um mm -hmm. like king david did Mm -hmm. but who has tattoos and has slept around and has a ton of debt, or someone who checks all those boxes, mm -hmm. but is arrogant, entitled, and kind of snooty. Exactly. It's just it's just not even close. It's the inner person that counts. Yeah. You know, I don't care. And I had the same um, thing going into dating, same attitude that you did, where it was just like, well, if he's, you know, not a virgin and he has debt and he has tattoos, well, if he loves Jesus, we can move forward and... Forward from that. Yeah, it's, you know? it's what are you doing with that stuff? Mm -hmm. right, are now. you if you are you not a virgin and you're still kind of sleeping around or flirting? Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Not yeah. because you necessarily slept around, but because you're still engaging in it. <laughs> or yeah. if you if you have a ton of debt, 
Mm-hmm. What happened with that? Was it a ton of credit card debt from shoes mm-hmm. and clothes? Was it debt because your um, oh, your mom died of cancer? And precisely. so, I mean, you know, I mean, bills. exactly. Totally different. Is it debt from college because your mom died? So now you want to be an oncologist and help people? I mean, that's a great thing. That's exactly. a great God calling exactly. right there. Or if it's you know. or if it's tattoos. Maybe you, did you get it in the past, but you're not proud of it and you're trying to hide it? Mm-hmm. That's one thing. Or is it a, you still have it and you're kind of flaunting it? Mm-hmm. That's very different. Mm-hmm. In, both, in both cases, you got tattoos, but the answer is very different in both exactly. cases. Exactly. Exactly. Or I had a girlfriend um, who uh, had tattoos from before she got saved, and she couldn't afford the laser removal, so she got them covered with crosses. Mm-hmm. So her, bo- her body now has cross tattoos all over it. To signal, you know, Jesus has cleansed me. I am right. free of, you know, the sins that right. brought about these tattoos. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's a much more tolerable girl than the than the tattooless one who is mm-hmm. snooty. Because oh, I don't have tattoos. Look at her. Ex- then it gets a poor grasp mm-hmm. of theology and what our state is before God. Because absolutely, the, the more we learn about ourselves, we should realize mm-hmm. even if we check certain boxes, we should realize just mm-hmm. how much for how much more we have to go. Uh, exactly. I, I, you the know. first commandment is to love the Lord to God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. Mm-hmm. Mine's in there. Exactly. Do we do that every second of every day? No. Waking or sleeping? No. Did we, have we done it our entire lives? No. No, we haven't. Mm-hmm. So please, don't elevate yourself mm-hmm. j- just because you check certain boxes. Mm-hmm. There's far, there are much bigger character issues in play mm-hmm. that we have to consider. And is it, do you love the Lord to God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? That's what we got. That's what we have to know. I love college. I do. I do. My college man. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yay. Okay. So anyway, guys, um, final thoughts. Any final thoughts on Laurie Alexander or her article? <sighs> Laurie Alexander, mm-hmm. just write a clarification. That'd be very helpful. <laughs> well, she tried to, honey. But then no, she, ended she up... just posted comments. Well, she, she said, what was that in the second one? There's the second one. Writing, writing two sentences does not count as a clarification. Are you sure? Because, I mean, they're really poorly written two sentences. So maybe maybe we're just misunderstanding her clarification. I'm positive. So, Ms., Ms., uh, Mrs. Alexander, you happen to see this. If you have a clarification, that means you're talking about character. That's what we really should be focusing on. Because mm-hmm. that'd be a much better article. Absolutely. And my description, too. I know you care about that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. My final thoughts on that are... Maybe we shouldn't listen to women that sh- haven't uh, had any theological training. Maybe. And and people that aren't consistent with their theology. Yes. Consistency because, is a big thing. Well, I don't like, care if you I, haven't gone to Bible college. But uh-huh. is, your th- is your theology consistent and is mm-hmm. it consistent with Scripture? Exactly. And this is not consistent and it's not consistent with Scripture. And from her articles, I can just... Oh, it reeks of arrogance. She's just oh, like... Yeah. She's the most arrogant person in the world. Yes. Why? Really Why? Why? Mm. So anyway, guys, uh, love you lots. Thank you for coming into my channel. Hi. I'm Chelsea Hess, and this is Isaiah Hess. Hi. My husband. My husband. It's mm-hmm. husbandy. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>